what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through, you have the leg well, loop, no? mm -hmm. and you have tie-in loop. And what I'm gonna do now is trace the thing back through. So it's gonna go through here, <laughs> cinch it down nice and close to the harness, and now it's gonna go around this way. Got a nice little loop right there, it's open. Right through there. And then I'm gonna go back around this way, and then I go back through here. Now you have two, four, six, eight, ten, and then no less than a dollar bill's length of tail left over. That's it. That's your figure eight. A lot of different ways to teach this, and um, sometimes I think violence is a, a good way to get things stuck in people's heads. So basically, I start with this much, I start with a loop. So I'm going to make Bob, I'm going to choke Bob. I'm going to come back around and poke Bob in the eyeball. There's your figure eight. <laughs> That's how you start it. Now, whoever's going to climb this first so get you tied in. Certain climbing gyms will teach this. They'll take the carabiner and you go through here and then through here. That's where the rope goes, not a blade device or a, um, a carabiner. Even. What this does is it orients the, uh, the ATC like this and it causes it to uh, cross load. You want it to have it like that. And even if it's like this, it can pop in here when you don't even realize it and you're cross-loading your carabiner. It's significantly weaker this way. Also, what's gonna happen is the rope's gonna go through in a funky way, it's gonna cause a twist. And after a while, you will permanently ruin your rope. It'll actually twist it to the point where the sheath and the core will separate. And basically, you have a ruined rope. It's done, it's trash. Uh, turn it into a rug. But if Jim's teaching this, it's incorrect. That's just not the right way to do it. And this is called a belay loop. For a reason. It's triple stitch, it's got two, uh, three different layers, and there's been only one situation where someone's harness broke, where well, the blade device broke, and that was because it was an incredibly old harness, it had lots of use, and it was worn quite a bit. And what was sad, it was actually a very accomplished rock climber, and it was something that was completely avoidable. So basically, this is your standard ATC right here. This is on more harnesses on the market than any other device out there. ATC stands for Air Traffic Controller. It's a black diamond um, piece of equipment. Here you go. Thanks. And then you have ATC XP. This one that's right mm -hmm. here. The XP means extra protection. It's got um, some teeth on there, and it's made for like skinnier ropes, or maybe you have a person that's a little bit larger in the group. You can use this, and it has extra friction through there, basically. And then that's your standard tube style blade devices. And you have brake assist devices. The brake assist is pretty much uh, these things right here. This is called a Grigri. There's a few others on the market, but the Grigri is by far the most popular. Um, this is the first style that came out. And it was, um, this design's been around for a long, long time. But it's basically, it's got a camming device in there that locks down the rope automatically. So here's that. It came out just recently, past couple of years, they redesigned it. They made it smaller and lighter. This is the Grigri 2. So you can see the difference. It's a little bit smaller, but um, this is a great device to have, although it's kind of expensive. Uh, it's about 100 bucks for this device. As opposed to the ATC, the standard ATC I just showed you, it's about 16 bucks. So it's a bit of a difference in price, but that's it. Top roping is also known as a slingshot belay, and it's about the safest way you can rock climb. So he's going to shoe up right now. And this is how you load it, and the plate closes over that, and then you clip it in the carabiner. When you clip it in, though, oh yeah, huh? Like this, and you lock her down. So now what this does is it orients the rope it's going straight through like this, and when he goes to lower. It's going to lock and you push the rope over like this. This is the friction plate right here. And then this bar pulls back and it releases that rope. And that's how you lower someone. It takes a little bit of practice to kind of get used to it, but um, picking up the slack is the same thing as using the ATC. It's no different. Along this time, a lot of climbing gyms were teaching this method right here. Where you do this number. This is actually incorrect. 
The reason why is because with an ATC, your hand's already up in a weird position. The rope is going straight through. There's no friction whatsoever. So when the person falls, it rips through the, uh, the person's hands and you have a bad situation. The way it's taught now, the way is like this. Do this number. That method right there pretty much ensures that the rope is staying in that break position. Plus, when you lock someone off, your wrist is straight. As opposed to being like this, it's cocked in kind of a funky, twisted position. At the end of the rope, uh, this is the wrong end, but uh, the end of the rope over there, I have a knot tied. And it's just called closing the system. So basically, you just wrap around this way, and it goes back through here. And this fisherman's knot. Now when you lower someone, this will suck into the device just in case that rope is too short for the route. This is a good habit to get into, it's called closing the system. You should always do that, no matter if the, the, the route's short or what. Um, this is a good habit. Four things you always check before your rock climb. You make sure the climber's knot is correct. Make sure his harness is double back. That's the two things right there on him. The two on me is to make sure that the blade is correct and that my harness is correct. Those are four things you always do a quick visual of.